Hello, and welcome to another Let's Play. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. It's not a Pico 8 game this time, but a indie title that is currently only available on Windows. So this is going to be a new thing for the channel, I think. I'm going to start playing some indie games, and this being the first, a game called Faith. So yeah, before we get into it, you know, we just up the volume a little bit. I heard about this game on a Tumblr blog of all places, long story, and I was intrigued. So it's got, it looks like an old school cross between a ZX Spectrum and an Atari game. And it's meant to be pretty creepy, so I thought, all right, yeah, it sounds different. Let's give it a go. Only downside is that it's Windows only, and I'm a Mac user, so I've had to install a Windows VM on my Mac here in order to play this, and then use the tools to create the video with it. So fingers crossed, nothing fucks up in the midst of this uh, recording process. So I've got my controller. Um, let's have a quick look at the instructions. So again, it looks like an old, very old 8-bit game, hence the graphical stylings, but I dig that, so that's cool. Similarly, the music has that 8-bit vibe to it. You can tell it's going to be pretty creepy. Oh, so we've got demons now. I did want to ideally play this game at night, but it hasn't turned out that way. Just finished work. It's in the middle of summer, so it's still quite sunny. Not quite the atmosphere that I was hoping for, but there you go. But if it happens, so happens that you're watching this video much later on, around in the winter or Halloween or something like that, then we'll see. So this is the complete first for me. I've never played this game before. I have absolutely no idea what to expect other than what I've heard. So I'm going into this completely cold. So this is quite exciting. So let us begin. Just going to turn up the sound a bit. Moonlight Sonata, huh? Okay. So, the action button raises a crucifix. So that is my only weapon. And judging by that little white speck, I am a man of the cloth. Wow. So what happens if I show my crucifix to this gear? Nothing. What the fuck was that? So right, already the atmosphere is down. Got the atmosphere down. So. Alright, I'm not sure what's going on here. Hold the action button over this well and it just flashes yellow. Let's 
I do like the music and the way it's rendered. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> God damn. I will say, so far, that it is an accomplishment of the developer of this game that they've managed to convey such an unsettling atmosphere using this aesthetic. Oh, very ominous, creepy looking house. It's locked. And of course it's locked. Can I go around the back? <laughs> Damn. That shit really does catch you off guard. Okay, I don't know if I'm supposed to be able to read this, but um not a lot's happening. Alright, let's just continue. Okay, so I don't know where this key is. And I don't miss Whoa. The fuck? <laughs> okay, right, let's have a look. I caught some people walking through the woods around the house last week. Not kids, just regular adults. They told me they got lost while hiking. I pointed them back towards the road. The whole thing just didn't feel right. I think I should go dig up Bob's rifle out of the storage. Yeah. Yeah, I like the sound of that. A gun would be quite good right about now. There's only so much you can do with a wooden stick. Or two wooden sticks, should I say? <laughs> the atmosphere in this game is mad. I like it. Kids and I miss you every day. The twins and Amy have started their next school here. Yeah, next school year here at home. Amy keeps asking when she's going to be allowed to go to the real school. I think she's getting cabin fever. <clears throat> the twins are having no problems occupying their time. Yesterday they came in with their hands covered in blood. Oh I guess they found a dead deer and thought it would be a good idea to touch it. I think we might have a coyote problem because when I went out with them to look at the deer, it was pretty gruesome. All this just a day after the twins' birthday party. Can't wait till you come home. Right, so I've just realised if you hold down the action button when things flash, that's when uh oh, I mean, you know, you suffer bitch. I ain't for that anymore. Yeah, that's when things appear. So I missed that when I was at the well. So is it gonna let me go back? and see what was going on with that well, because it looked fairly significant. And one of the only things I do know about this game is that the more lore you collect, the better prepared you are for the boss fight. So, 
to excuse me. I'm going to sort of um, double back on myself a little bit. And I must say, I have absolutely no idea how long this video is going to be. This is a complete first for me. Not like my Pico 8 videos where I'm just showing you a little game. I'm actually just doing this whole thing completely afresh. So I know not what to expect. Now this oh fucking hell! Martin's house lies about 100 yards off the Snake Meadow Hill Road. There's almost no driveway. Trees just down in the middle of the gravel path that is mostly covered in grass. It's going to be the final house, especially since it's already dark when we arrive. Father Aldred seems to know where he's going. He simply drove straight ahead until he arrived at the house. In headlights, I saw an old shed off to the right of the path. Father Aldred explains that he would rather perform the exorcism but the Martins had insisted that Amy remain inside. The complaint that having family present makes it difficult to receive the comments of the right that may seem harsh to their neighbours. Um, that's all I can say. Okay. Here's a key. And that little white flash in the background was either lightning or a Fuck me. So if you're watching this, I've cut out a load of footage and I've got myself into the house finally. So there was a... I did also find the well. There was a children's birthday party invitation. And a minute ago there was also a note here about a child being tied up in the basement in restraints. So there's some weird shit going on here. Getting a vibe from this that um, we've got some strict religious family who think their kids are being possessed or something like that, but let's see. So I recorded all, I would, I've spoken all about this before, but then realized I forgot to hit the record button. So I'm just kind of recapping things. And I really must stop saying so, so much. Because I know that. I do that from my other videos. Anyway, I digress. Nothing's in that cupboard. I never did find that shotgun either. So I'm just walking around a very creepy... Lo-fi looking house. Whoa. Okay. As I said earlier, I really do like the atmosphere of this game a lot. Now it's taken on a more survival horror-esque kind of feel but in a very 8-bit sort of way. Which is a novel approach to this kind of genre. Alright, so that must be Amy, the girl who's locked up in the basement. Sorry, you guys missed that from um, the video because... I forgot to hit the record button when I was talking about it. Never mind. And this looks like a child's bedroom to me. Some toys over there. I see a little uh, Simon Says over there. 
I really don't want that. That's that, that an edge sketch. Really do like the atmosphere of this. So at the moment, I'm walking up to stuff and pressing the action button, waving a crucifix around in the hopes that something, anything happens. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Bob must be stationed somewhere in the Middle East because he sent me over this weird looking doll for Amy's birthday. I'll ask Anish about it next time we have a book club. She looks like she could be from over there. <laughs> Amy didn't seem excited to see the doll. I think she would rather have a phone instead. Maybe seeing a baby doll makes her feel self-conscious about working at a clinic. Yeah, so you're piecing together a story here. I guess I was the only one who thought to check in the attic. When I got up there, it was freezing cold. I found Amy staying at the back, looking straight at me like when, when I first met her downstairs. We spoke briefly, although it was frustrating to talk to her, or it. Huh? I experienced a bit of deception from the demon. Damn, that escalated quickly. During our conversation, she uttered my mother's first name, and in other instances spoke perfect Latin. I called for her help from the others, but nobody came. So I raised my crucifix and began the rite again. Okay. Interesting. I have to hand it to the developer, the guy who made this, or well, they really put a lot of thought into the atmosphere. And, well, everything really. And with such, and using this 8-bit aesthetic is just a stroke of genius as well. Anyway, I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I hear voices outside around the house at night. I don't let the twins out in the woods to play anymore because I'm afraid of what's out there. The house itself feels stressed, distorted, slanted somehow. It's like I'm walking through a carnival house. Amy's condition has only gotten worse. I can't stand to be around her and I don't know why. She doesn't seem like herself anymore. I want to take her, take her to the doctor. I can't leave the boys here. I found that the phone stops working throughout the day and now I can't seem to find my car keys. Thank God but Bob comes home tomorrow. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna live in a house in the middle of the woods, you're gonna expect some creepy shit, generally. So I'm not entirely surprised at what's happening to you. I really wish there was a dash button though, because walking around at this arthritic pace doesn't make for a good video. Hang on. This is new. This is new. All right. Let me just explore down here a little bit and then end the video. Okay, so I'm sure you're just as intrigued as I am. And if you're still here after all my waffling, then I commend you somewhat. Anyway, let's see what's in this basement. That looks like a child's cot. This can't be good. Dear Amy, thanks for writing. 
It's really brightened my day hearing from you. In your letter, you asked what's the weirdest thing I've seen as a missionary. The area we're working in has a lot of folks who practice Quimbamba. Okay. It's what you might call a pagan religion. It's kind of a mix between a mix of Catholic and African religions. Oh, okay. One of the saints they worship is San Lemuete or Saint Death. Yesterday we talked to a boy ooh, about 15. When we asked him if he could if he's ever prayed, he said no, but I prayed to San Lemuete. If I'm saying that right, but there you go. He told us about a time when he stayed over at his cousin's house and According to him, they prayed to some figures of, of, and the figures made things in the house move around. He got real quiet and scared looking after that. It sounds pretty cool, to be honest. We told him he could pray to God and that God would make him feel, wouldn't make him feel scared like that. Hmm, you try reading the Bible, mate. We invited him to church, but he hasn't come yet. I need to wrap this letter up and get back to work. See you in four months, Leighton. Yes. Intriguing. Hmm, yeah. Well, that's not creepy at all. And again, done in such a lo fi way and to such good effect. Hmm, yeah. That looks like the... Uh, what's left of some kind of satanic rite to me. What are all those runes? But we'll get to that in a moment. Amy's parents could not endure witnessing the proceedings of the rite for long. Mrs. Martin was hysterical and the thing that was inside it, Amy was feeding off her fear. Father Aldred asked me to take the Martins upstairs. I was physically worn out, but managed to get them back to the stairs in the kitchen. Amy was screaming, Mother! Mother! the whole time. Finally, I got them to sit down with me at the kitchen table. After a few minutes, we couldn't hear much of anything down in the basement, so I went down to check on things. I found Father Aldred lying on his back, unconscious, with his arms spread out wide. Amy was not in the chair. Yep, there's some pretty off-key shit going on here. Um, whoa. I love it. I love the genius of the fact that they... I keep repeating myself here, but... 8-bit stylings here. With a creep, creepy atmosphere I've not seen... In a horror game since... Well, since, for a long time. A stroke of genius. And I really, really like where this is going. But I will have to end the video here because it has to end at some point. I'm not going to do a whole playthrough. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wandering around and rambling too much. And you're probably getting bored of hearing me just chat shit. So, this is where I'm going to leave it. I recommend you download this game for yourself. Check it out yourself. Find out what it's all about. See where it's going. I'm going to leave this on this absolute cliffhanger. Thank you for watching. Now I'm going to continue playing this game after I've stopped, hit the stop button, and who knows where this is going to go. So this is it from me, 
Thank you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.